Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Bill Colorhouse. I'm the director of choral activities at Binghamton University and also the artistic director of the Southern Tier Singers Collective. And these three workshops, that of which this is the first, um, are a combination of a lot of conversations that I've had with various people. And these three topics in particular seemed to be topics that people would find particularly beneficial. Um, so this is going to be relatively informal, even though we are being video recorded. So if you have a question about anything, please feel free to just shoot your hand up or just interrupt me. That's totally fine. We're not looking to make this sort of like some kind of polished thing that we're going to put up in a, as a TED talk or anything like that. So, um, so the title of tonight's talk is The Care and Maintenance of the Mature Voice. And like I mentioned a few minutes ago, I'm going to be speaking in first person plural for a lot of this. I'm 48. And I ha can tell you honestly, there are some things that my voice does not do quite as well or quite as easily as it did when I was 28. Um, but there is a lot of stuff that I know how to do and that I do do every day to keep my voice doing everything that it can. And so those are the things that I'd like to share with you this evening. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just kind of go through the handout and I'm going to try to move through the handout quickly enough that we've got time for questions and answers at the end since we're only here for about an hour. And so I tried to put all of the scary stuff at the very beginning because that lets us do happy stuff for the rest of the time. Um, but I, I also find, I mean, I'm a realist. I find that it's helpful to actually know the science of what's going on so that you know exactly what you can do to help keep things in as good a shape as you can forever. Um, so, muscles tend to atrophy without use. The more you use a muscle, the less it atrophies. Hi, Elizabeth, come on in. Um, the more you use a muscle, the less it atrophies and the stronger it stays. If you don't use it at all, it will shrink. And that occurs naturally to a certain extent, but it's exacerbated by underuse. And the danger for us, as we go into our later years, is summer. And I'm seeing people nod, right? So one of the things that I am very careful to do is I try to keep singing a little bit every day over the summer when I'm not teaching. When I'm teaching, obviously, I'm using my speaking voice all day every day, and so my voice gets a fair amount of work. Um, and there's a fair amount of positive muscular load that's placed on the, on the voice of a teacher, as Jane can, we were just emailing back and forth about that. Um, but summer can, can be a little bit of a danger zone, because we don't have a lot of singing opportunities, and we don't, also don't have as many speaking opportunities. And so keeping your voice going during the summer is an important thing. Um, you, when the muscles begin to shrink, that can contribute to an overly wide or an overly slow vibrato. Strengthening the muscles will bring that vibrato back into the normal range in terms of both speed and width. Um, and here's the thing, once a lot of core muscle mass is lost within any of these little muscles, it's more difficult to bring the muscle mass back than it is to keep it in the first place. So wherever you're at, start today keeping the, and we're talking, these muscles that are in the voice are like, they're all the size of little teeny shreds of chicken breast. I mean, they're just microscopic little tiny things. <clears throat> But they do an incredible amount of work, and they work relatively quickly. They, they make fast motions. Um, so th the good news is that even if you do end up using, losing some muscle mass from underuse, you can bring it back. And so that's what we'll be doing in a few minutes. Um, hormonal changes are an important thing to be aware of. Women's voices tend to drift 10 to 15 cycles per second lower before and after menopause. And men's voices actually go lower in pitch until about the early 50s, and then they begin to drift upwards. Um, obviously, everyone's mileage is different, and I'm probably going to be saying YMMV, your mileage may vary a lot <laughs> over the course of the evening. Because, I mean, you know, there are some women's voices who go upwards and there are some men's voices who go downwards and there's, you know, there's no cookie cutter. Um, the vocal folds themselves are 
strips of tissue that come together. And if you put your hands together like this with your index fingers touching, keep your index fingers touching. And what the vocal folds do is this. Do this with your hands. Right? So your, your first knuckles, those knuckles right there, are what we call the arytenoid cartilages. And there are these little pyramid-shaped cartilages. And then your index finger is your vocal fold. And that's the strip of tissue that actually touches. <coughs> and those folds <coughs> vibrate together exactly the same way as the double reed of an oboe, or the lips of a brass player, or if you've ever taken two strips of grass and put them between your thumbs and made a duck call, it's the same idea. So you've got two pieces of tissue that beat against one another to set up the vibrations. Um, inside the vocal folds and deeper within the tissue is a strip of muscle, and when that muscle contracts, the vocal folds thicken. And I will get a little bit more into this a little bit later, but that's what gives us what we normally think of as chest voice. So when those muscles contract, the vocal folds get thicker and you get a heavier sound that we think of as chest voice. When those muscles within the vocal folds relax and the muscles outside of the vocal folds pull them tighter, you get higher pitches and you get what we think of as head voice for women or falsetto for men. So it's this register. Um, the vocal folds, the strips of tissue that actually touch each other, lose elasticity. And so they don't stretch and rebound as quickly. Um, and the collagen within them starts to get depleted, which means they start to get thinner. Those are things that simply happen with time. And so what we look to do when we exercise our voices is to counterbalance those physical changes with healthy techniques so that we can keep the sound warm and full and rich and the mechanism relaxed and everything. And that way, as the, the color of the voice will change slightly, but if the technique is healthy, that color change can be minimized and the strength can remain. Um, my favorite example of this is Sally Dunkley, who is one of the singers formerly of the Tala Scholars, and she currently still sings with the 16 if any of you are familiar with that group. Um, I think Sally is in her late 70s now. She's a founding member of the Talis Scholars and a founding <coughs> member of the 16. She's been doing this stuff for like four decades at this point or more. Um, and you listen to her sing, and it's still this gorgeous voice that can soar up to a high A and down to a low G. And she's singing mostly alto stuff in those, in those ensembles now, but the sound is still absolutely beautiful. And she can sing perfectly straight tone, early music as, as easy as you please, and then she can turn around and do the Brahms mezzo solos with viola, and it's just this warm, gorgeous sound, and you know, it's as if nothing has ever happened to her, and time has not touched her. So, um, nerves begin to lose mass, and the nerves fire more slowly, and that's another reason why vibrato tends to slow down, is the nerves are firing a little bit more slowly, and, the, and vibrato is a result of... Um, signals from the vagus nerve that cause gentle contraction and relaxation of some of the laryngeal muscles, which gives you the oscillation of pitch. And as those nerves fire more slowly, the vibrato will slow down. The ligaments and joints tend to weaken a little bit, and so that means that you've got a little bit less range of motion, and that will affect the, the pitch range of the voice. Um, and then the last thing is that your breathing muscles all around will begin to lose muscle mass and begin to weaken a little bit. And so that's why doing the breathing exercises and the posture exercises is absolutely crucial because you want to keep that, those muscles in the breathing mechanism as strong as you possibly can. So what I'm going to be showing you from here on, that's the scary stuff and we're done. See? <laughs> what I'm going to be showing you for the rest is some specific concrete things that you can do at home, you can do in your car, you can do when you're out walking, um, wherever you can make sound to keep all of those systems as healthy as possible and as functional as possible so that you can sing beautifully into your hundreds. So, so here we go. Um, the most important thing, as I said earlier, is to just keep singing every day, a little bit. The, and then I'm going to specify that it's important, as often as possible, to sing across your entire pitch range and across your entire dynamic range. 
And one of the things that happens very frequently um, as we begin to move into more limited patterns of when we sing and when we don't, for example, if we're only singing on Thursday nights and Sunday mornings, is that the other days of the week, we're not exercising the voice all the way to a full forte, and so a full forte becomes more and more difficult because we're only ever doing it twice a week. And so one of the most important things to do is to take your voice to full forte every single day and to take it up to your, comfort your highest comfortable note and your lowest comfortable note every single day. So let's do a little bit of that. Stand up. You don't need anything in your hands. So just, just see where things are at for your instrument right this second. Start on an U vowel in the middle of your range. It, can, it doesn't have to be the same pitch as your neighbor. I'll come around. Let's see, yeah. Is that, am I in the view now? <laughs> okay. Let me uh, move this thing back. And maybe move this thing forward, and that way I can stay. All right, cool. So start on an U vowel in just right in the middle of your range, and at about a mezzo piano dynamic level, take it up to the highest comfortable note you can, down to the lowest comfortable note you can, and then back to the middle. Ready? Go. just did is you were crossing between what we now call M1 and M2. M1 formerly known as chest voice, M2 formerly known as head voice for women and falsetto for men. Um, the reason that the voice community is moving towards M1 and M2 is because it's a lot less ambiguous. The term head voice means something different for women than it does for men. And for most voice teachers, when they tell their male students to sing in head voice, they're telling them to use the register that corresponds to chest voice for women. Mm -hmm. So when you say M1 and M2, there's no doubt about what you're talking about. So start, and, and by the way, M1 is your speaking voice. Only Mary Burgess speaks in M2. <laughs> so start in the middle of your speaking range on that U vowel, go down this time, come back up, let it cross, and let it crack if it wants to. Cracking is absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with cracking. Go up to highest point and then come back to the middle. Ready? Go. Yeah. Now, a thing that I want to show you right away when you're doing these siren exercises, which are wonderful to keep the range in shape, because they're very, very easy. You don't need a pitch pipe. You don't need a piano. You can do it anywhere you want. One thing to remember is that when you go up into M2, to make sure that you're allowing your jaw to relax and your tongue to relax for the highest pitches. So just watch. And I just let my jaw relax, and that way I can get up to those upper pitches with ease and comfort. So give that a try. Sometimes this gesture that Barbara was just doing is easy, is, is helpful. Um, don't push your cheeks in like this because that's not helpful. <laughs> but if you just touch your fingers to your cheeks like this, it just reminds you to relax the jaw as you go higher. So try middle up and then back down. Ooh. And the presence of the fingers just helps you remember to relax the jaw. It's just a kinesthetic thing. Um, so. The other thing that you may have noticed is that as we did these several times, as a group you were starting to get louder, and that is also a good thing. So when you're doing these sirens, do them at a, at a mezzo piano at first, and then do a few more and get yourself up to mezzo forte or even forte. You rarely really need to do daily vocalizing at fortissimo, but you should take it to forte. So this time, start in the middle at mezzo piano and go up, and as you go up and over, increase the air speed and see if you can take it all the way to forte as you go over the curve and then come back down. Here we go. Exactly. All right, now do the same thing going down. And it doesn't have to get louder than forte, and it shouldn't feel heavy, and it shouldn't feel pushed or forced. 
You're just exercising the lower range with a full sound and full breath support, but you're keeping everything nice and relaxed and open. Ready? Go. Now, fascinatingly, for perhaps unsurprisingly, everybody did this. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> so you always want to keep the mechanism aligned. And I'm actually going to go segue to the idea of alignment right now, and then I'm going to come back to that lower exercise. So, um, when you can be standing, because you want to be as independent of any external support thing as possible, because that will keep all of the muscles as strong and as balanced as possible. So, if you, however, need to sit, that's totally oh. fine. You can be standing from the hips up. So, so shift your weight back and forth between your feet and find a balanced position where your feet are about shoulder width apart but your weight is equally balanced between your feet. You might want one foot slightly forward or you might want both feet even. It's up to you. Make sure that your knees are flexible. You don't want them flexed, but you do want them flexible. You don't want them locked, because if they lock, then you might go pew. Um, then make sure your hips are swivelable. You want to be loose and kind of able to move. And then make sure that your shoulders are nice and relaxed. And make sure that your neck feels tall and you're facing straight forward. So, what that results in is that if you look at me from the side, my ankles, my knees, my hips, my shoulders, and my ears should all be in a straight line. And if, you're, if you just close your eyes for a moment and sort of straighten the line upwards from the bottom and just bring your awareness to your ankles, then your knees, then your hips, then your shoulders, then your ears, and think of yourself from the side view, and just make those points into a straight line, you end up with nice tall posture and you should feel relatively relaxed. So those are the points of alignment. Ankles, knees, hips, shoulders, ears, from the side. And that will help th keep things in line. Now, lift up your arms, but keep your shoulders relaxed. And just let them be kind of a nice relaxed curve. You will notice that your thorax expands when you lift your arms. Now keep your shoulders relaxed, but your thorax expanded, and let your arms drift back down. And your thorax is nice and expanded, and you still have the centered posture that you established with the five points. Okay? So now, here's the, the thing that you get to play around with. We're all taught to like make sure that we stay aligned, perfectly centered all the time when we sing. Let yourself be flexible but keep the things in an even curve and imagine that instead of being a, like a cylindrical drinking glass, instead your body is a garden hose. And it can bend, and you, when you bend a garden hose, the diameter of the garden hose stays the same, right? If you bend your body, but you keep the alignment then you can have the same amount of space and the same amount of openness in the body and you can still be flexible. Just try it. What you don't want to do is let there be a kink in the garden hose. And so if you do this, you can see my neck actually looks kinked, like a kinked garden hose, right? So that's what you want to avoid. If you think of your body as an unkinked garden hose, then you can keep the openness and the alignment without feeling rigid. All right, so now that we've got that established, your face is facing forward, and you've got the alignment set, and now you can do the low pitches that we were doing for just a minute ago without going like this, ooh. And you notice what happened to my sound? It went, ooh, right? So, ooh, nice and resonant. Ready, go. Ooh. No, 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 you're still going, you're like, no moving of the head at all. Keep it everything nice and open and forward. Ready, go. There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes it, it helps to put a fingertip on your chin. Sometimes it actually helps to put, like, to touch the top of your hair and make sure that your hair does, your head doesn't tip. So just try that. Ready, go. And there you go. And so that way you'll keep your face in, in alignment. 
Um, okay, so we actually just went through the alignment thing, and we did the open thorax with the arms up and down. I'm going to give you some breathing exercises next. And remember, the singer must breathe in quickly and out slowly and in a controlled manner. So these exercises are designed to make the inhalation phase shorter and shorter and shorter and the exhalation phase longer and longer and longer. Make sense? Mm -hmm. So rule number one, inhalation should always, always, always be silent. If you hear anything sound-wise, then that means that something is constricted and getting in the way. So inhalation should always be silent. I find it easiest to inhale through the mouth and, mouth and the nose at the same time. If your nose is stopped up, then obviously you're going to inhale through your mouth. Um, if your mouth is stopped up, which never happens except mm -hmm. when you're eating food and trying to sing at the same time, which is probably a bad idea. But anyway, so um, you're going to inhale silently, and the only thing that I should see move is your midsection. So your thorax remains expanded, your shoulders remain relaxed, your body remains aligned, you feel like a nice tall garden hose that can flex if you choose, but this is the area that expands when you breathe in because the lungs expand downwards as they fill with air, it pushes your guts downwards and outwards, and then this area expands when your guts get pushed down and outwards, right? So, in on four and silently out on four. One second per pulse. Ready, breathe. In, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, breathe. In, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. This is a good exercise to do in front of a mirror, because in front of a mirror, you will see tiny little microscopic movements like, watch me. Right? See what I do with my shoulders? And I see how my back is actually arching a little bit, mm -hmm. instead of just staying centered and letting the expansion happen here. So, but sometimes off helpful if you do it kind of like at a 135 degree angle to the mirror, because then you can also like see what you look like kind of from the side view. Alright, so now it's going to be in on four and out on four. Ready, breathe in, two, three, four, and two, three. Four, breathe in, two, three, four, and s two, three, four. In on two, sh on six. Breathe in, two, oh, nope, did you hear it? <laughs> did you see in your peripheral vision that people were doing? <laughs> All right, no one may see anyone else's shoulders move in their peripheral vision, and there should be no sound when we inhale. Ready? Breathe in, two, and sh two, three, Four, five, six. Breathe in, two, and shh. Two, three, four, five, six. In on one, on seven. Breathe in and no. <laughs> <laughs> Silent inhalation. Ready. Breathe in and two, three, four, five, six, seven. Breathe in and two, three. Four, five, six, seven. In on one, on eleven. Breathe in and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Breathe in and three, four. Shoulders relaxed. Six, seven. Thorax expanded. Nine, ten. 11. In on 1, shh, on 15. Breathe in and shh. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Breathe in and shh. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So as you do those, the eventual objective is to try to get all of your air out over the number of seconds you have chosen to exhale. <laughs> and that is something that we, won't, we can't really do tonight because you haven't really calibrated your understanding of your own capacity yet. Does that make sense? But as you do these exercises, 
more and more frequently, you'll get a sense of how much it takes to get the air all the way out over four seconds versus getting the air all the way out over 15 seconds, right? And what you want to do is try to exercise the lungs so that it's a maximal inhalation and a maximal exhalation over the number of seconds you have chosen to exercise. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, so, have any of you ever seen those um, breathing things that you have to use when you're in a hospital bed for more than 24 hours? And the thing is that it's the inhalation that, that makes the ball float up to 1500 or whatever the number is, right? Um, my mom was in the hospital over the summer and I was like, oh, mom, it's time for your breathing exercises again. She's like, no, I don't want to. I was like, I don't care, here. <laughs> so, um, but that, that, those things, uh, you can get them at medical supply houses. You can order them off of Amazon. You don't have to tell anybody that you ordered one. I have one because it's the, it's the best inhalation strength builder ever. So, if, I mean, and they're like, I mean, they're really cheap. I mean, you know, it's like a plastic toy thing that they give you the hospital. So, and you, so if you, so I heartily encourage you to get one of those to practice the inhalation. I don't know what they're called. They're called the breathing inhalation exercise thingies. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, if you Google search like inhalation exercise hospital something. Therapy tool. Yeah, what's that? Therapy tool. Inhalation therapy tool. Yeah, inhalation therapy tool or something like that. You'll, you'll, it's a, it, they have these little, two little handles and, you know, and it has a ball that floats up and, you, yeah, so. Um, and it's kind of fun because like there's numbers and so you can set goals. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, and then eventually you will find that you can actually pace out an exhalation over longer than 15 seconds. The last thing I want to do with the breathing thing is that you can also exhale out on vowels. So it's going to be in on one, ah on 15 on a very slow downward siren. Okay, ready, breathe, in, and. <laughs> right? And so it's like all of a sudden, oh, hmm, I gave too much too soon. Let's try that again. All right. Pace yourselves. Ready, breathe in and. See, that all of a sudden you're teaching yourself how much you... All right, now do the same thing on an ah vowel. It's going to be in on one, out on seven. Half as many, but use all your air. You're going to have to be louder. Ready? Breathe. In and... All of your air. Did you get rid of all of your air? Okay, so see if you can do a really strong... And let the room fill with beautiful, healthy sound. Ready, go, breathe in and. <laughs> now, here's another thing that you can practice while you're doing that exercise. Um, make sure that you don't go overly loud and it shouldn't get heavy at the bottom, but you will have noticed what happened to our vowels, right? <laughs> Right? Okay? So, listen to me do that, and I'm actually going to get Nancy to demonstrate the same thing in a, in a little bit higher. And notice that the ah stayed tall until the very, very, very end, but it stayed tall all the way down, and did you notice that it stayed exactly the same amount of tall as she crossed registers? Listen again. And that time it stayed tall all the way until the very, very end. Okay, make yourself do that right now. Ready, go. There you go. So you might as well practice all the things whenever you're practicing any of the things. All right, so I'm going to turn the page over. And I'm going to invite you to be seated, just because we'll stand up a little bit later. But I'm going to make sure that I'm in the of the camera thing. Is the camera still able to see me? Hello, camera? Yes? Okay, good. All right, so um, the next thing that I'm going to talk about is opening the throat. 
And there's this wonderful book called Essentials of Beautiful Singing by Karen Tillotson Bauer. And if, if we can, if, if any of you did not RSVP by means of the Google form, then maybe Elizabeth or Nancy or I can pull up an iPhone and fill and get the Google form up, or we can just capture your email addresses. Um, I can send you some supplemental resources and links and things via email after this, and then I can we can also make it available on the STSC website or something like that mm -hmm. for people who are going to watch the video. Um, but Karen Tillotson Bauer's book, Essentials of Beautiful Singing, she has this three-step, super easy to remember approach, and the three steps are encapsulated in the word oof, O-O-F, open body, open throat, forward articulation. And if you think about singing, if you do those three things, you've taken care of like 95% of the stuff that you need to take care of. So we've talked about the open body thing, and the open body thing allows us to do healthy breathing. Open throat is triggered by four different possible things, and they are mostly affective. One of them is a yawn. <laughs> so everybody, see if you can make yourself yawn. I saw it <laughs> Can you actually make yourself yawn for real? Try it. Yeah. It's not that hard, right? Okay, so what happens in a yawn is that if you do a full yawn, your jaw overextends, and your tongue gets pulled way, way back. Just try it. You feel how far back your tongue gets pulled? So the key to using the yawn for singing is to have an incipient yawn. So try to do the beginning of a yawn and then try to stifle it. Do you feel the back of your throat open up like this? So that's thing number one. Thing number two is an incipient sneeze. Now, it's really, it's hard to make yourself sneeze. It's easy to make yourself yawn, it's hard to make yourself sneeze. But try to, try to do a pretend sneeze that starts with the start of a real sneeze. Ready, go. Right, and you know, your nose scrunches up, right? But when your nose scrunches up, the other thing that happens is your throat goes like this, right? Just try it again and feel, feel the throat go like this when you... You, you feel it happen, right? So that's thing number two. Thing number three that will trigger the opening of the pharynx is the sound that you make when you have sincerely seen the cutest baby or puppy or kitten in the world. And you go, Aww. Aww. Now, when you do it and you actually feel it, it your throat will go like this. And I'll let, So here's the contrast, ready? Somebody has a pet slug. <laughs> and they think it's the cutest thing in the world, and they say, isn't my slug adorable? And you say, aww, and you're all sarcastic. Ready? Go. Aww. Notice that your throat didn't open up. Yeah. Alright, now it's an actual puppy or a kitten or a baby. Ready? Go. Aww. Do you feel the difference? Yes. Wow. It's amazing, right? Yeah. The fourth thing that will trigger the opening of the pharynx is mischief. Exactly, right? So, so when you do that little laugh, when you go, <laughs> you'll feel it. <laughs> like, just, just smirk. Do you feel it happen in the back of your throat? Yeah. Right? And so, of course, I do this with my college students, and I like to so these are the four ways. How many, for how many of you do you open up your throat best by imagining yawn? And a few of them put their hands up. How many first needs? A few of them will put their hands up. How many of you are for a cute puppy or kitten? A few more of them will put their hands up. How many of you from like a smirk or mischief? All of them put their hands up. <laughs> so, but those are the four things. So take a second right now and try all four of them and see which one results in the greatest feeling of openness. Yeah, the thing is you can't actually like let yourself go through with the yawn, or else the, the jaw opens too much and the tongue gets sucked back. <laughs> Thank you, puppy or kitten of the mischief, yep. So, so then, if you put your tongue in the position for an e-vowel, that will prevent your tongue from getting sucked back into the back of your mouth when you open your throat. So put your tongue in the position for an e-vowel, 
Breathe in across your tongue with an with a, with a, an open inhalation, and then just do this. I'm going to demonstrate this without an open throat first, and then with an open throat. And all I was doing was, for me, it's actually the cute kitten thing, because I'm a cat person. Mm -hmm. So, although it's the mischief thing a lot. Too. Um, all right. So listen, let me ask Nancy to do the same thing. So do it first without an open throat and then with an open throat. I'm doing the same pitch as you did and I don't want it's okay, to. Yeah. It's a tremendous difference. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, be bored, disaffected teenagers for a minute and just do the pattern. The, on the same pitch that Nancy just did. Ready? Go. <laughs> right, it's grotesque, right? All right, now, choose your image, put your tongue in the position for the E vowel, and what I'm going to do is breathe, sing. Those are going to be the gestures that I use to remind you. Ready? So, breathe. <laughs> It's actually helpful to go back and forth between not open throat and open throat when you're doing the warm-ups just to make sure that you're really aware of the feeling. And then once you feel like you've got the feeling established, then you can dispense with the not open throat iterations and just do the open throat iterations. Um, and here's where a pitch pipe is your friend. Simply so that you can map out your own comfortable starting pitches for all of these exercises. And remember, home voice practice is all about starting where you are most comfortable and working outwards in both directions. Um, you might have more room to work in one direction than another, but start where it's comfortable. Use the pitch pipe to, to keep track of where it's comfortable and then work outwards. Um, so... Then, so what we just did was letter D number five, and then letter D number six is And this actually works best if you start on a relatively low pitch and work your way upwards. So you're putting your tongue forward in the E vowel position, breathing in across your E vowel tongue, and opening the throat as you breathe in, and then he, the, the throat is already open, and all you do is drop your jaw and your tongue down for the ah. So ready? And. All right, so that was a B. Here's a C. towards the ah and start taking yourself more towards mezzo forte. And then you go up as high as is comfortable and then move on. Um, okay, so next we get to actually do the straw. All right. Before we do the straw, I want to show you what you can do if you don't have your straw handy. Ready? This is the fun thing. This is the one thing my kids love. Take your hand like this. I'm going to scoot back a little bit so I can see Jay. All right, take your hand like this, fingers together. Put it in front of your face like this, and go. Puff your cheeks out. This is the blowfish exercise. And it is a semi-occluded vocal tract exercise. Semi-occluded vocal tract exercise means that the vocal tract is partially blocked so that as the air enters the vocal tract, it gets bounced back upon the vocal folds from above because not all of the air can escape. So the pressure builds up in a healthy way, and what that does is that it present, prevents the vocal folds from slamming together too forcefully because the air from up top is kind of keeping things stabilized. That stabilization that is created by the back pressure 
then forces the vocal folds to operate at their most physiologically efficient level. And once you do the exercises a little bit, it creates temporary muscle memory for that efficiency. And that's why the straw thing is so amazing. So without the straw, just do this. Listen first. <laughs> that your cheeks are puffed out all the way. Do it again. So that was a C sharp, here's a D. So blowfish exercise first. <clears throat> exercise that lets you basically get twice as much bang for your buck. And it's just because your mechanism is working more efficiently from the temporary muscle memory of what happens with that back pressure. So the same thing happens with the straw. And you will notice that you can't go absolutely as low and absolutely as high with semi-occluded vocal tract exercises as you can <coughs> without, and that's okay. So. help if you puff out your cheeks. Now E. And so you're able to get a lot more focus in the sound with a lot less effort. You can do different, vo different vowels with this. It, it, you won't sound very different, but you can put your tongue in different positions. So this is an E vowel. And this is an U vowel. Do E and then U. consonant creates the resistance that makes the back pressure happen, and then the vowel releases it, but lets you sing with the temporary muscle memory. I usually you do these on one, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one. So I'm going to start on a D, and... And notice the clarity and the focus that you get in the sound, and notice that the E sounds a lot louder than the V did, even though you're not actually using a whole lot more air for the E than you were for the V. That's kind of the proof of the, 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 of, of the concept, is that the fact that the dynamic difference is so noticeable, even though the air quantity is about the same. All right, so then the other one that I do is mm and ooh, so we'll try that on F now. Mm -hmm. Now 
create lots of space with the ebb sound first. And you notice the same thing, that the U sounds very, very strong, even though you're not working any harder than you did for the M. And then the last one is mm, with a very relaxed jaw, mm, followed by ah. And the mm puts the jaw in the position for ah, and all you have to do is just relax the tongue downwards, and you get an ah afterwards. So my turn first, and then yours. You notice how much louder my ah was than my mm? I wasn't using any more air. So all you're doing is creating temporary muscle memory of the most efficient vocal production with the, with the occlusion, and then when you open up into a vowel, it's there. And the more you do these, the longer the temporary muscle memory lasts. So, and I've got all kinds of like super duper scientific articles with nine syllable words about this stuff if, if that's where your brain goes. So, um, the stemple vocal function exercises are exercises that are used almost universally in speech and language pathology and in voice repair therapy. And there are four of them. The first one is to sustain an E vowel, not smiley, but not with fish lips. Pianissimo, but not breathy, and that's very important. You don't want to waste air. Not breathy, as long as you can. So it's going to be on an F3 for tenors and basses, and it's going to be on an F4 for the sopranos and altos. Okay? Quiet as you can. Relaxed jaw, forward tongue, focused tone, as long as you can. See if you can bring your awareness to the sympathetic vibrations in the front of your face as you sing the E vowel. You will probably become aware of those sympathetic vibrations after you get the sound started. You will want really, really nice open body posture for this because that will allow you to keep it going as long as possible. slide like this. No. <laughs> and the reason that I flick the tongue at the end for the L is that I don't want to allow myself to get into the squeeze position. I want to keep my body open and when I feel myself needing to start to squeeze, that's when I flick my tongue and I'm done with the exercise. Okay? Ready? Go. No. teeny schwa at the end of the L. Right? Um, try to make the register shift as smooth as possible, and you do not need to go too fast. Ready? Go. No. Yeah. And I mean, it, you, you'll take however long it takes. As you do this exercise, you will find yourself 
sort of instinctively starting to slow down when you approach the register transition so that you can manage it more smoothly and that is the whole point. So do it one more time, slow down as you come towards your break and see if you can put the clutch in and shift the gear and then go on forward. Okay, ready, go. No. is exactly the same thing with downwards. So you're starting in M2. You're starting in your truly child voice. <laughs> no! And then you want to do the register shift across the registers downwards as smoothly as possible. Ready? And don't try to pick too high a starting pitch. No! no! The fourth one is basically a variation of the first one, but instead of using an E vowel, you're using the syllable old, <coughs> like nol, except without the N, or old without the D. And the reason for that is that the, the roundness of the O creates focus but also space. So the first exercise used an E vowel because it was all about focus. The, the fourth exercise is about focus and space. And you use the L as the flick of the tongue when you reach the end to prevent yourself from squeezing. So, you start on a C. Nope, not that one. For tenors and basses. And again, you're just going as long as you can. You want to make this kind of mezzo piano mezzo forte, but you want it to be absolutely stable. keep track of the number of seconds that you can do it and try to keep, increase the number of seconds like from week to week. Um, and then you, what you do with that fourth exercise, you do it on a C, then a D, then an E, then an F, then a G. Um, I will tell you that these stemple vocal function exercises were what kept me completely fresh of voice two years ago, no, three years ago, when I was doing Schubert's Winterreise, I don't know if you're, if you're familiar, but it's an hour-long song cycle about this guy who's lost his girlfriend and he's trudging through the snow for an hour. No, the songs last for an hour. <laughs> and it's like song after song about how depressed he is because he's lost his girlfriend and he's trudging through the snow. When I, I did these, these vocal function exercises every single day for two months, when I got to the end of the performance, of Vintoraiza, I felt like I could sing the entire thing through a second time. I was just like, okay, let's do it again. We didn't, but, but I mean, I was like, it was amazing. And, and I don't think that that would have been the case had I not done these exercises, because they, it's all about efficiency and focus and getting the most sound and the most projection and the clearest tone for the least amount of effort. So it just frees everything up. So there's just a couple more that are on this page. Um, these next ones in letter G are very typical. Listen to Nancy do that one in her register. And so notice how smooth the register shift was. You take the slide nice and slow, and for me to do it in the same and you notice I have a little bit more crack going up than coming down. Um, and then start mezzo piano and then work your way up to this is a great one for power and freedom of vocal expression. I like to do this one with full vibrato, and I also like to make sure that I'm using vibrato on the slide portion as well as the stable pitches. So, I have vibrato going up and vibrato coming down as well as on the stable pitches. Just try it. You can do those on 
on a fifth, you can do them on an octave, you can do them up, you can do them down, you can do them on any vowel, you can change vowels and come back. You, but what these are great for is opening the voice up, getting it to mezzo forte and forte, and mapping out which vowels work best in which part of your range for you to achieve that vocal freedom. So I usually like to start on E down low, and then I'll do U in the middle, and then I'll do A ah up at the top just like the, um, the V and the M and the NG exercise. But everybody's different, your mileage may vary. Um, so that's letter G. Letter H is, uh, you wanna do at metronome 96 <laughs> if possible. And if metronome 96 feels a little too fast when you start doing these exercises, then set your metronome at whatever speed allows you to do it comfortably and cleanly, and then notch up as is comfortable for you. Um, so this is just super simple. One, two, three, two, 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 one on an eval, and ready, and go. Notice how we want to get a little sluggish. And go. Do it on a nine note scale. And these are also great for getting you to support the high notes without sustaining the high notes, so it's a nice way to ease your vocal range upwards. Um, so, and you, you, know, you can use your pitch pipe, and so we're in C major and you're here. And. Keeping the vowels vertical as you go higher and higher, which is often helped by a fingertip touching the chin. Just listen to me do that, and then listen to Nancy do that, and we'll do it. And you do an octave higher than me. Notice that the, the fingertip on the chin keeps things nice and tall. Ready and go. Vowels that you want, um, and then finally the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, all the way up the scale and down. What I make my kids do is switch the words backwards when they get to the top of the scale, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips. Let's just try it. Ready and go. The lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the lips, the teeth, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the tongue, the teeth, the lips, the tip of the t
Um, so we have a few minutes left, and I'm happy to stick around for a little while. Is the, the thing's still rolling, right? Okay, I don't want to keep you too late, but um, I'm happy to take questions. If you've got another engagement, if you have to go out bar hopping with your friends, then you know, right. feel, <laughs> feel free. But any, anything that you would like to ask further about, I'm happy to answer. So, and also, I just want to say thank you all for coming tonight. I hope this has been useful. Um, and please, if you do, I mean, do whatever subset of these is helpful to you, but just <laughs> sing some every single day for the rest of your lives. That is what will keep it going. So, thank you. Thank you.